Hey folks, we are going to... Let me fix this real quick. We are going to continue with uh, uh, our asset production here for the Spelljammer Combat and Exploration book we've been working on. Uh, give me a moment here to check my signal, and I will here to check my signal. Cool. Get through my spiel real quick, and then uh, we'll get this um, we'll get this up and running. So we're gonna have some fun today. Uh, if you follow me on Twitter, I've just posted that I'm live on Twitter. So if you wanna find out if I'm live on Twitter in the future, you can follow me on, or rather, at Phil Kearney. Uh, I'm just hitting some discords real quick to let folks know that I'm still alive and kicking. And uh, we're about less than a minute away. So here's my spiel. My name's Phil. Hey, Phil Kearney here. I create uh, RPG supplements uh, as PDFs. I publish. I'm, currently, I'm making for 5th uh, edition D&D Spelljammer supplements, Spelljammer Combat and Explorations. It will publish on the DMs Guild as well. Uh, there is a link in the description down below to a slew of books that I've already created over the past few years on DMs Guild. Uh, they're all 100% free previews, so you can uh, click into any of those books, and on, if you're on a mobile phone, click on the I icon, the, the, the I icon uh, on the right-hand side of the screen. And if you're on a tablet or desktop, uh, when you go into any one of those books, on the product page, you'll see the... the here, I'll, I'll show you real quick. <clears throat> Um, let's see. Hey, Hornetico, it's good to see you, my man. Uh, let me get this out of the way, and we'll get to, let's, uh, blah, 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 DMs Guild. Let's go to DMs Guild real quick. And, uh, let's go to, um, tap, untap, burn. Here's one of the books that I've created that's in the description down below. You can see here uh, that it says full preview and quick preview. If you click on the full preview, it'll pop up a PDF here. And as you can see, uh, all 75 pages of the document are available for you to read. There's a, uh, if you buy it, there's a ton of assets that come along with it, like a play mat, tokens and stuff. But most importantly, there's a shitload of art in here. So whether you're interested in any of these ideas or not, uh, certainly be welcome to, to check out the artwork that's floating around inside of here between the doc uh, between the different products that are listed in the description it's probably about 150 different illustrations and if you like any of the ideas or the art please consider making a purchase to support more production uh, like subscribe hit the bell I do this every morning Monday through Saturday uh, I'll be uh, I'm also on in the evenings occasionally Mondays and Thursdays uh, producing art assets maps uh, doing um, text design, mechanics, playtesting, uh, all the spiels that go into making a PDF, uh, and, uh, a supplement for a role-playing game. So without further ado, this, uh, this cover we produced here and the uh, Spelljammer um, uh, playlist that I have on my page that this episode will be added to when we're done. Uh, this is like around episode 12 through 15, I believe. We were working on a star moth last night, so I decided to just go ahead and finish it because I had a little time on my hands. So I finished the star moth, which means the entire set of spell jamming vessels are completed. Uh, we've got the uh, the bombard, the damselfly, uh, the flying ship, uh, the hammerhead. Zoom out a little bit. Hammerhead ship, lamprey, living ship. Nautiloid, Night Spider, Scorpion, Shrike Ship. These are all from the SAIS, uh, Spelljammer's Adventures in Space at Wizards of the Coast, published in August last year. Um, uh, Space Galleon. I like the transparency effects that we ended up with with the with the, um, with the sails. It's very um, Treasure Planet, if you're familiar with that Disney title. Uh, they had um, basically like laser sails that would catch photons off of suns to push their sails. So I figured since you don't actually need crews to, to, to work the sails in 5th edition, then why not go with the transparency? It, it goes along with being able to see the floor deck, and I think the aesthetic is fun. And it's going to let me do things like have transparencies, if uh, uh, depending on what art I end up producing. Here's a squid ship. Uh, depending on what artwork we go with inside the book, I can use that same transparency effect 
to be able to not block the view of everything that's in the illustration, but still get the point across of the of the of the sails that make the the, the that the ships use for momentum. <clears throat> so this is a squid ship, uh, star moth again, uh, the turtle ship. I don't know why I'm so happy with the turtle ship, but I am just super happy with the turtle ship. Uh, the tyrant, which is by far the worst token in the world. And, uh, and the wasp ship, which is honestly my favorite. So I, I thought it was a damselfly that was my favorite for the longest time. I just like the bugs. I like the bugs a lot. The damselflies are pretty... I've got that transparency going on in these guns. I might end up replicating these on the others, but I think by far the wasp is, I think, the coolest looking token. But uh, so that's all of the all of the vessels. All, what, uh, 16 vessels that are listed in the Spelljammer's Adventures in Space. So that's a, that's a feather in our cap to be able to complete that project. But now we have fighter craft that we get to build. So if we go into the... Uh, S, uh, if we go into our... Uh, layout document that we've been building here scroll down to the ships we have pre-generated ships here's the the ships from the spell jammers adventures in space that we just looked at and now here are the fire craft that we are in the process of building the uh the goblin blade and the uh Elithid cuttlefish elven flitter um, a, a, a manta ray, it's a, a, also known as the small jammer. The correct answer was small jammer. Uh, human or Hodozi, I guess, skiff, and then uh, Niyogi spiderling. These are the different stats for these ships, and um, they're just a smaller scale. So let's uh, let's go ahead and. Why would I need to save any changes? But oh yeah, because I added the word ray. You know, we'll save that. <clears throat> uh, Hornetico is working on a project in the background while you have the time, so it might be, uh, you're, you're totally cool, man. I just appreciate you showing up. And anyone else that's just casually through, uh, again, I do this Monday through Saturday. Uh, the greatest support you can give to the channel right now is to subscribe and like and help me log in some more hours of views. So if this stuff is interesting to you, subscribe, hit the bell, and then uh, go check out the first episode where I start talking about mechanics of Spelljammer in general. <clears throat> so we are going to excuse me. Let's see. We've got uh, we've got a slew of different ships here. I'm not necessarily happy with the floor plan for any of them. <laughs> so we're going we're going to spend some time. There I am. I'm laughing at my own jokes like a real YouTuber. Look at me, Ma. Uh, let's take this down. To, I'm, I'm just we're just we're just making stuff today. Uh, I don't have uh, I've, I've got a production agenda obviously that I want to fulfill, but. Um, Right off the cuff, I'm not happy with how that Elven Flitter is shaped. It just looks stupid. So let's make a, let's make something better. Let's uh, let's go with uh, 2E Spell Jammer Elven Flitter. Let's see if I can find some reference art. <clears throat> that is a small little flitter ship. I am looking forward. To building the Armada. Oh my god, I'm so looking forward to building the Armada. Um, eh. Skipper, Flitter, beep, 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 beep. What the hell is that? Doom bat. Yeah, okay, pass. Thanks, though. Um, ooh, that's a good one. Nice. Ah, the mosquito. Rip. I love mosquitoes. Those things are so cool. Uh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to find a better floor plan than what we already saw. Are there smaller ships? Hell yes. And we are building new smaller ships right now, my guys. Right now. So I'm going to pull that up for harassment later. Ah, I'm coming for you, Dwarven Citadels. We'll have you. Not my top priority right now. I'm just focusing on what's actually in the books. And expanding the the idea. I mean, obviously, fighter craft aren't in the book, so I'm a liar right there. Uh, but uh, I, I want to try to not have too much scope sprawl is an issue uh, with books. Um, you don't want to. Let me take a look at what this one is. You want to make sure that you're just you're keeping you're keeping your project within a reasonable. Like if you, if it keeps growing and growing and growing, you never get your product done. You have to call it at some point. 
you can always come back and add more stuff, like as a PDF or whatever you want. Ooh, that looks really, really cool. All right, it doesn't look like I'm gonna get anything really useful out of any of this. Maybe, maybe I can see something useful here. <clears throat> I don't think I like how this one looks though. Yeah, not a fan of that. All right, mad props. Uh, so flitters, they're biggies. We're gonna make them 50 foot ships. Uh, the largest size that a fighter craft, a largest size a, a ship can, uh, the largest size fighter craft that you can make in this system is 50 feet by 50 feet. If it's any bigger than 50 feet, then it becomes a vessel. Uh, a there's a, <clears throat> again referencing our document. Here we'll get into the artwork here in a minute. Just doing the setup. So going back into our document here. Uh, we'll do more layouts for this on Saturday, but uh, so there's two types of helms. There's major and minor helms, right? So major helms from the um, Spelljammer Adventures in Space supplement on Wizards, uh, the Wizards of the Coast published. Major helms are 5,000 gold. Minor helms are 500 gold. Major helms are capable of achieving 100 million miles per day of travel between worlds, which is how Wizards of the Coast presents it. Uh, and that breaks down... Uh, if we go into a, I need to do a, uh, what I definitely need to do is build a quick fact sheet for this supplement so folks have just quick, easy mechanics to access. But until we get everything hyperlinked together, just scroll down here and let's just do a quick map breakdown for folks traveling. So, hold on. let's get down to it. Oh my God, I think it was up. I think I actually have a, a faster reference up here in the craft. There we go. <clears throat> okay, so ca uh, craft maps and movements. They break down at different speeds. Major Helms, uh, in a day, do the 100 million miles that we're used to from 5th edition, as well as 2nd edition reinforces this as well. Uh, and then you have the Minor Helms, which are capable of uh, moving ships up to 50 feet in size, while Major Helms are capable of moving ships up to 500 feet in size. It's just that Wizards of the Coast didn't provide any ships that are larger than 250. Don't ask why. But the Armada and uh, Dwarven Citadels are easily 500 feet. So we have more space that we can go back to and build more things when we're done. <clears throat> but um, uh, the uh, uh, the Alithid uh, Octopus as well was like, was like 400 feet. So anyway, so we have we have room to grow and more things to add on as a as a future supplement uh, to this once it's done. But staying within the scope of what we're working with, uh, you have major helms and minor helms. Major helms are five thousand gold. Minor helm are five hundred gold. Major helms can be affixed to a ship up to five hundred feet in length. Minor helms can be affixed to ships and make them go up to fifty feet in length. Uh, the time traveled in the course of a day for a major helm is 100 million miles as written in the book. The minor helm has 1 million miles per day. So it has 100, um, it's, uh, it's less, uh, uh, it's 1% it's of the total travel time, 1 100. Uh, so you can break down your day from one day to two hours or one hour, and then two hours to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to one minute, one minute to one round. You're breaking things down in scales of 10. Everything that we're working on here as far as movement and time based is scaling on the tens. You're gonna see that happening over and over in this book. You're also gonna see that happening over and over again in the Armies and Kingdoms book that we're also developing, which I also have a playlist for in, in the stream down below, which will be converting Dragonlance, uh, War of the Lance, and the, the, that board game that it took them two years to make, whatever. So um, you'll see scaling of tens everywhere. So uh, one day, 100 million miles, it breaks all the way down to in an hour, you can move 5 million miles uh, or 50,000 miles on a, hel on a minor helm um, down to 100,000 miles per minute or 1,000 miles per minute in a minor helm, which breaks down in one round to 10,000 miles which breaks down as a minor helm to 100 miles. And if you then further break down, as we were looking at on yesterday's stream, we're gonna go back and look at that. We were looking through the mechanics of traveling on a map at different scales. So down to the one round of combat, you can have squares for a major helm, a 
square on a combat map up to 1,000 miles in size. And uh, on a minor helm, you would be operating on a map at most at uh, 10 miles uh, scale on the map. So fighter craft move considerably slower than major helms, but uh, you also have the issue of gravity wakes, that these ships have these gravity fields um, that, you know, gravity planes up, down. We, we know those mechanics from 5th edition. And uh, if a fighter craft can get inside of a vessel's gravity field, you're gonna have to knock the, you're gonna have to scuttle the fighter craft and get it out of your gravity field. Uh, otherwise, it's just gonna sit on you and travel with you until you can punt it out of your space, which we have mechanics for in this book. So having said all that, uh, we're looking at the differences of minor helms versus major helms, which is the difference between fighter craft and spell jamming vessels. And yes, you can affix a major helm to a fighter craft if you wanted to invest in that that have a much higher speed which is assuredly something that players will end up doing when they have the money to do it so long story short too late we are building deck plans uh for these ships and i want to i think um i think i'm done <laughs> carrying on so i'm going to put this and we're just gonna have yeah that middle of the road like that so it's not mistakable <clears throat> i'm gonna make a four point box one two three four five six seven eight nine ten Free transform equals 90 degrees. Duplicate this layer and then we're going to free transform equals rotate 180 period. Bop. Merge square. Um, let's Yeah, somehow I didn't do that right. All right, let's just merge that down real quick. I'm a perfectionist for no reason. Merge. I do not need the heater on today. It's probably going to be in the 50s today, so I think I'm done with my heater weather, but I'm not done with coffee ever. <clears throat> All right, let's go with something easy at first. Let's go with a, let's just go with a skip. I'm going to set a timer on my clock here. 20 minutes on the block. Bloop. So, we still have about 100 minutes. Ah, uh, your bigger turtle, bro. Let's start with a, let's start with a skiff. So, let's see, how do I wanna do this? I want to, Let's start with what we started with. Oh, that's right. We got, uh, let's just grab a random uh, piece, of, piece of ammo munition. Not that one. Flying fish. Good. Color and turrets. I'm going to duplicate this layer. We're going to take it to the craft tokens. We 
Where are you at? There you are. Danku. <laughs> that is very small. Why are you so small? I think you are so small because... Hold on. I suspect... My resolution is huge. So let's take our resolution down like a shitload of notches. Yeah, 100. <clears throat> yeah, that's not good. All right, let's go back to where we was and let's do that again. Duplicate our layer and take it to the craft token layer. I bet it'll be much easier to find now. Why are you so small? Ugh, I am just hating on myself here right now. Let's go with. Slow start here, guys, but I think we got things kicking now. So thanks a lot for your patience as I figure out how the world is actually supposed to work. So let's put this here and <clears throat> Let's go with uh, hmm. four pixels as far as big. Two looks pretty good. There are no specific rules about how these things need to be. This one is um, a so they could be up to ten by ten. If they are, they would have a um, hundred hit points. Uh, Fightercraft, this would only have, uh, this would have 40 hit points, which is aligned with, which is aligned with Infernal War Machines, so that is good. Yeah, this, uh, this Fightercraft system was inspired by the, uh, the playtesting we were doing for Descent into Avernus, the Infernal War Machines, when, uh, when Spelljammer came out, we realized that all the, uh, Infernal War Machine mechanics that we have been working on work. With Spelljammer, that was incredibly exciting and allowed us to um, essentially just uh, build out this project. And we started, you can check in the playlist, we, we started officially on, what was it, August 15th that, uh, that Spelljammer came out. I think that was the date, maybe it was the 17th, but that, that day is when we started streaming uh, production for uh, for the supplement that we have. So that was what August, September, October, November, December, January, February. We're now in March. Jesus, seven months. <clears throat> that's uh, that's the production timeline that uh, a 110 page document takes. Cheers to that. <clears throat> what is that? Three pixels? Why do I got three pixels? Uh, 
let's go fetch a floor plan so we can see what style of floor plan we should be building here. Uh, let's grab a let's grab a smaller one. Let's go with the damsel. I'm just gonna grab the floor deck. Mm -mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like having. Oh, I don't know why that happened. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so top side deck, wall equals. That's four pixels. And now the width of the wall for interior space. Yep, it's 10 pixels. Sure is. All right, so four for the top deck and ten for interior space on the. Oh, that's 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 too big. So let's uh, let's resize this thing so it's working on the same scale as we are to see actual pixels. So let's make this uh, a little more transparent. We can zoom in and see what actual pixel sizes are at the 100 pixel scale. Is that? See if that lines up. <clears throat> Pardon the pun. That is awfully close. There, guys. Price of perfection. Yeah, that's pretty damn close. Yeah, it's a little off, but it's probably close enough for science. So let's drop this down again. Uh, what was that? Uh, three pixels? Let's go with four. Four is too thick. Three seems about, yeah, three is right. So the actual answer is three. So that probably means this is eight. Good. Uh, so let's go back. Let's go back to two. Yeah, it looks like three is the correct answer there. All right, three continue. Okay, so three and four. <laughs> okay. Three and four. And that is the, er, that is the language that we have. Go grab. Uh, let's grab something simple like um, a space galleon. 
Ah ha ha! Railing. Uh huh. Maybe if I open image. I don't know what's going on with this thing lately. Copy image. Fuck you, buddy. Whatever. We know what it looks like. So maybe we'll just be content. Uh, we're at, what, three pixels? Let's go with, um... Two pixels for interior. We are building a, uh, a blunt ram into the nose of the skiffs so that you can headbutt stuff without taking damage yourself. You can ram, any ship can ram, uh, but if they don't actually have a ram um, built into the vessel, then your ship ends up taking damage along with whatever it is that you ram. So you wanna have a ram within the lines. There's bludgeoning rams, there's piercing rams, and there's slashing rams. And uh, so when I get, when I, when I uh, build out the, build out the, uh, the, the, uh, the quick fact sheet for each ship, um, we'll be able to add in all the different Mully weapons that ships can have that we use in the system that uh, aren't aren't native to the uh, Adventures in Space supplement, like uh, like the Neogi, uh, like the Neogi Night Spider, for instance, having uh, all of its legs being able to, to operate as piercing rams. That uh, that's our innovation, and so we have to include that in a uh, in a ship in a, in a ship schematics. So you know what weapons are automatically available for each craft or ship, whichever scale you're working in. I can duplicate this layer and we can transform equals flip it vertical. Why are you what? Wait a second. How did you end up way the way over here? What we don't have is strong language for um Oh, we'll just have to we'll just have to trust. I'm just gonna have to trust the system. The system is down. System is down.
H for Helm. So we got Siege Weapon, Helm, and then we'll have M for Mounted Weapon. That's a horrible looking M. seat, mounted weapon, which you can occupy the same space as a mounted weapon to be able to operate it, such as a harpoon flinger, uh, an arcane cannon. If you're, an, uh, if you're a beholder, it could be an ice stalk, or it can be a uh, hook and chain. A fun little combat skiff. Um, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's go ahead and Side of the skiff. Get the skiff out of the way. Uh, hey, timely timer. Let's keep it going. Uh, let's see here. Burp, burp. <laughs> Supplement, make sure everything's lining up. Skip 20 feet by 20 feet. There you go.
Here we go. Yeah, I'm good with that. So now we can conceal the, gear, the skiff. Next thing we want to mess around with is... Uh, gear out of the way. Oh, hell with it. Let's just grab the Manta. real fast. Um, how do we want to do this one? We're going to go... Not a big fan of how that tail turned out, so we're going to do some fixing. Do, do, do. But we want to make sure it's lined up first, so hold on. Let's get rid of the... We'll use that as a base, and then let's uh, yeah, let's build on top of that. So, Manta Ray, I'll duplicate this group. Interior space, thank you. Let's keep that like that for now, I guess. What, one, two, three, four? Something like 40 by 40? Is that, is that what I want to do? No, 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 no. Thank you. 
This is a good song. I like this one. Yeah, maybe I just go with the original four point. See how that shit pans out. This is blocked in, so I can stop worrying about it so much.
Yeah, that works. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Grab picture. Oh yeah, it looks, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that. Just like that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Nice. All right. So we'll duplicate that layer and we'll flip it horizontally. Perfect. Let's build Make it timely timer. Man, I love doing this stuff. This shit's fun. Duplicate. Retransform equals flip horizontal now, baby. down. Yeah, not bad. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven.
Nah, I was right. Contemplating. Nah, we'll just leave it open plan. Alright, we're good with that. We are good with that. Okay, cool. So let's just work on the next one. Uh, what is the next one? Next one is... Let's just work on the blue. on the screen. Need a blister for this one. Uh, H and N. H. Drop to the back. N. Holy Hannah, these things are tiny. All right, that's cool. Uh, let's go with. Um, Get away with something cheeky and tiny like that. Let's uh, let's see if we can. Blade three by three. I mean, we're not off kilter, so that's cool.
something like this. Nice. Form equals flip horizontal. Nah, nah, nah. We can merge those together and we can. I wonder if we broaden this a bit. Seven fifteen, that's awesome. Let's go to two pixels. layer now it's done the whole point was to have a railing there so why would I
Ah, that feels right. We duplicate that. And we'll flip the horizontal. M stands for mounted weapons, and mounted weapons could be anything like a harpoon flinger. Um, uh, it could be an arcane cannon. It could be an ice stalk. It could be a uh, hook and chain. All those things are legit. Merge down. So as long as you are occupying the same space or adjacent to a helm or a mounted weapon, you can utilize them both. Uh, this is a little twofer. Uh, one, two, three. Looks like it's actually occupying a four by four space, which I'm not necessarily happy with. Three by three, but I think that might be a little too small. want this to merge.
Uh, almost there. Okay, time the timer. Keep it going. There we go. Nice. Okay, this is gonna work out. Get out of here. Get out of here, you excess garbage. There, okay, no, oops. There, yeah. There. Cool, let me duplicate that and flip it horizontal now, baby. All right, sweet. Rename this. Uh... Oops, looks like I accidentally emerged. Uh, let's go with beat, beat, beat. Down. Arrow. That is a three by three space.
So what's next? Ah, oh, there we go. Uh, let's go space by. space bike get out of here uh let's go instead with the uh... yeah let's go with the spiderling So far, so good. Um, let's see.
Build some legs. Uh, do, 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 do. <laughs> just uh, you know, just me drawing stuff. Got the blade finished. Got the uh, sorry, the uh, the goblin arrow finished. We got the blade finished. We got the manta ray finished. These are just deck plans for now. So we'll finish out the deck plans probably today and tomorrow, and then we'll colorize them into tokens, and then we'll be done with those. So these are coming along really nicely. There's two types. Of, uh, of spiderling that we have in the uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, the the Miyogi ambush encounter for Lydas Arachis. Uh, one that has uh, ballista, so it's a siege weapon attack, and the other one is just mounted. Oops, my, my my seat's broken. Hold on, I gotta fix it. Ah. We got uh, two types. We got the ballistas that can do siege weapon damage to ships. And then you got a boarding, uh, a boarding ship that only has mounted weapons and um, and Yogi crew. So the, there'll be the two types of formats that the that the team has to fight alongside the Night Spider while they're in the uh, while they're in the asteroid belt. So I'm just building a generic Spiderling craft right now, and then we'll be able to build a different floor plan for them for the actual adventure. So we'll have a zip file, and one folder will have the vessel tokens, another will have ship craft tokens, uh, and then there'll be the map, uh, the, the map assets, and then uh, specific, uh, and then tokens for each specific ship um, that is in the different encounters. It's like the Omama Hunt will have a skiff, and. Uh, and the, the Elven Flitters and the uh, and the Citadel uh, attack the Citadel encounter, and then again the Spiderlings for the for the Neogi hunt. Uh, I think we can duplicate this layer and then free transform to 
Gut. duplicate these layers and let's see if we can just retransform and flip them vertically baby I think I like about these spiders the most is uh, is that these uh, the piercing rams the way that piercing rams works is that it does its damage. Um, what does it say? Uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a four by four, so this would be doing um, it'd be doing two um, D ten damage, like not siege damage, just two D ten damage for each for each. Uh, um, spider leg that's used to, to spear um, spear a ship uh, but uh, what I think is really fun about it is that once um, um, a piercing piercing rams uh, regardless if they're if they're um, on a vessel or a small fighter craft they, they deal the damage and then they can grapple so when you hit you automatically get to grapple and then the enemy has to use a uh, uh, a strength or dexterity saving throw to break free from the grapple. When a piercing ram makes a grapple and uh, and it's successful, it can't be used again while it's grappling. You can you can extract the weapon and then stab again and then grapple again. But once once you have a grapple in there, you can't grapple more. But you can stab with more weapons to have multiple points of grapple. So with the spider lane, it's got it's got eight legs. So it could potentially grapple you up to eight times. That you would have to take an action to ungrapple each time, which is just a freaking nightmare to get the damn thing off once it gets onto you. Which uh, which I actually love a lot because it can't do any more. Like once it's grappled you, it can't damage you. And maintain the grapple at the same time. So if uh, if a pilot only has one attack per round, it would take eight rounds for him to engage all eight of these legs as grapples, which would which is a ridiculous amount of time. That's eight rounds. You're going to be done with this guy far before then. But the threat is there. Uh, but more so beyond that. Um, is uh, once it, it's very sticky. 
once it gets on you, you you can you can spend actions trying to peel it off, but then it can spend its actions to then just put itself back on. So you, if your your pilot can quickly just get into like this like this nothing argument with this with this little craft that's sticking to the back of your ship like a tick, you know, you can you can waste your action economy trying to pluck the thing off, or you can just tolerate it being there and try to kill it. But it, it's designed to be a distraction. Like specifically, it's designed to slow down. In the Nyogi, in the Nyogi fight, it's got these, it's got these little spiderlings that will fly up and and just stick onto your ship. And if you don't get them off of your ship's back, then they can't. I mean, they can, they can keep doing damage by having another piercing slash 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 slash. You know, have a whole bunch of them eventually grip into you but the bigger threat is the boarding crews have all this greek fire so when they grip onto your ship they can just start throwing fire on your deck and now you have to either fight the night spider which is a huge threat with all its ballistas or you can try to peel the the, the spiderling off of your back or you can have uh, your team try to put out the fire that it's dumping on the deck so it's creating these multiple fronts of of, um, of threats at all at, at all three scales of engagement the 500 foot scale for the for the night spider the 50 foot scale with these spiderlings and then the five foot scale with the fires being dumped on your deck so it lets you it lets the dm harass the team at multiple points at multiple scales simultaneously it makes for a really cool little fight and uh, and i think i think that is i think i'm most proud of that I just well aside from me just liking the idea of <laughs> of having ships stick into you, uh, the uh, the arrow that we developed here it, that's a piercing ram. So once that hits a ship and it sticks, uh, the point is is that it can then unload a bunch of goblins or cobalt or whatever is riding on this thing. It can just unload troops so it, it hits your ship and it gets stuck into it automatically, and then all the all the crew that's aboard can just ready action to disembark. So it hits your ship, it dumps crew on the deck, and then you could you your the, the pilot can shake this thing free, but once it's emptied, who cares? It doesn't even technically have to have a helm attached to it if you don't want to. You can just throw like you can just launch it off of a trebuchet and it just hit the ship. And when it hits, it it pierces, and now you're just dumping crew onto on, on board of a deck. I don't actually have one of the arrows um, in in the adventure. Um, but, uh, I, I would certainly love to build out a, a little encounter thing to add as a, like, as a pay what you want little adventure thing. That's, that's the cool thing about this. Once it's published, I can just start adding pieces as, as just extensions and add-ons and, and like pay what you want supplements and then stack them into a bundle so that there's just like just like with like if you check out the the five color mana spell point variant rules that i have there's a stack of books inside of there and and like we'll be adding spell point sorcerer and spell point artificer and um the gods of theros there's, there's different things we want to do with that as well it's just i gotta prioritize which which project do i get to work on at a time unfortunately uh, I only have so much bandwidth. Maybe, God's willing, maybe I'll eventually have a studio of folks that I work with to, to help me build out ideas. But for now, it's it's kind of just me. But um, once once you build one of these like flagship books, you can start adding additional supplements to to show like to demonstrate how you can use a supplement to to create more and more content to harass your team with. So like I want to build the Elven Armada, which is like a 500 foot, 100, you know, like like a, a huge freaking ship that you can put a crap load of little of, of these little craft onto as a carrier, just like literally like an aircraft carrier, which is how it was designed to be in Second Edition, but they didn't translate it into Fifth Edition, and no one yet has really created any fighter craft to complement vessels that I've seen. Uh, I think I've seen one supplement that created like a combat fighter craft, but it's but like it's not a system. It's not like it's not like Infernal War Machines, 
buffed out to be flying machines, you know? I, as far as I know, I'm the first person to do that. I could be wrong. I'm sure someone else has thought of it, but it, I haven't seen it on the guild yet, and I've been eyeing the guild like a hawk. So I feel like we're breaking new ground with this stuff, and that's exciting. I, I reserve the right to be wrong. But I keep looking for stuff, and I haven't found anyone that's been able to make a smooth transition from 5 to 50 to 500 feet to be able to have these different scale ships that properly integrate with your D&D game. So I'm really excited about that, and I just want to keep adding to it. Which is a problem because I'm supposed to be doing Dragonlance after this. Which is also a problem because I'm supposed to be doing Martial Powers as well. I just, I love Spelljammer so much. It is, Spelljammer and Planescape have always been my favorite settings. Granted, Dark Sun kicks a lot of ass, but... Planescape and, and Spelljammer are by far my faves. Yeah, that explains it. My gut's like, dude, you're almost done. I'm like, am I? Yes, yes, I actually, wow, I just actually locked up too. Vessels out of the way, you will know. Gear in here real quick. <clears throat> this has hold space, um, um, also known as a, uh, a slave pen. So, Neogis are slavers. They they steal people and they sell them, or eat them if necessary. And uh, and so the spiderlings that they created are large enough to harass ships, but can also scuttle around on deck, grab crew, dump them into the holding cell here in the abdomen, and then fly off with prisoners. So one of the threats that you have to your ship is is not only just being attacked in general, but uh, these things can come along and can steal your crew off of your ballistas. Like So if you're trying to attack the yogi, one of these little things can fly up and snatch your crew off of it. That And, and every time you lose a, crew, a, a siege crew member, um, the, the reload score increases to the point where you don't have enough um, crew members to be able to efficiently reload the weapon after it fires, so your rate of fire slows down. So these things could be catching your, fire, uh, your deck on fire, harassing you and stabbing your ship, stealing your crew. <laughs> it's, just, it's a fun little encounter. So There's a lot of options for the DM to just to be able to harass the hell. out of your players to go messing around with these guys. So running away is the, is, is the optimal. Ideally, the crew runs. Uh, the, 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 characters, the characters never run. But ideally, the characters would run, get out of the asteroid field, run into the, uh, the patrol ships, and then hook up with the patrol ships to make a squadron to go back into the asteroid field to then go attack the Niyogi with more firepower so that you aren't out, out manned. Uh, it's just, uh, it, I guess it's just an issue of how well does the team survive to get to that point, which is, uh, which is the challenge. But if they get, if they get their asses handed to them a little bit, then they should be thirsty for vengeance and will be happy to see a squadron show up 
that they can then lead back into the fight, you know, to get their grudge match on. And then if there's a, and, and then of course, you know, you've, you've got some loot. If you can, if you can capture any of these ships, you can either keep them for yourself, like for the Omama uh, ed, uh, encounter later on. If you've stolen one of these, uh, one of these spiderling ships, that encounter becomes super easy because you can just, you know, take a ballista and just shred the shark. Or you can just sell all this stuff off uh, at the Rock of Brawl as um, uh, as uh, as salvage claim. about out of time so I'm gonna have to cut here but I want to duplicate this real quick transform flip horizontal This will be the last thing I do. And then we'll be back tomorrow and we'll finish uh, the cuttlefish, the flitter, uh, and then we'll get into uh, coloring these tokens. I could I could push these legs out a little bit more to fill in the space a little bit more, but we'll do that next time. So I'm pretty happy with how this is now. It was pretty inconsistent before, but I think it's looking really good now. All right, my guys, uh, that is it for today. We will be back and we will continue our token production. We'll be back in 22 hours, my friends. So I will see you then. I appreciate anyone that showed up. Um, certainly drop comments down below. Uh, check out the work I have. Like, subscribe. Um, more um, more subscribers is, is definitely what the channel needs right now. We're at 147, I think. And so that's that's not bad for a, you know a year, I guess. 
<laughs> so uh, I just want to keep building momentum, and uh, and hopefully this is something that folks think is interesting. So um, um, yeah, thanks a lot for being here, guys. I will see you all tomorrow. Cheers.